911, do you have an emergency? Today on Rescue 911, a risky escape plan for a wild night on the town turns deadly. Grab me! I'm slipping! When a teenage girl plunges four stories to the sidewalk. It was like a horror movie right in front of my eyes. I expected to be a DOA when we got there. Plot. On April 10th, 1992, 16-year-old Andrea Jones and her best friend Rachel Coates were enjoying their last night of spring vacation in the resort town of Gulf Shores, Alabama. Andrea's parents had set a midnight curfew, so around 11.45, the two girls returned to their family's rented condo. That night, we met some teenage guys, and they were really nice, and they ended up inviting us to their condo later on. So we knew that we wanted to sneak out. No, I don't. Sorry. I can change. I heard the girls come in. I went to their room, and they were both undressing. At least I thought they were. Are you ready to go to bed now? Yeah. Yeah, I'm tired. Okay. Well, we'll see. We just pretended like we were getting ready for bed and stuff. Got to meet them. Okay, but how are we gonna get out? I mean, we can't go out the front door because Mama hears. You don't think she'll hear us, do you? Yeah, she can hear a pin drop. Great. We have to meet them. Oh, I know. Hey, but I know. How about Andrea kind of looks at me and said, "Do you think that we can scale the wall?" And instantly, I thought that you know that'd be cool, you know, because Andrea and I never did anything really exciting or like rebellious. as hard as it looks. I wanted to go before Andrea because I was taller and I thought I can probably touch the balcony first and make sure that everything's safe. Kristen Kuhn and her girlfriends were also renting a vacation condo. We saw some feet coming down the balcony and were surprised. I mean, you're not expecting to see somebody climbing down your balcony at midnight. she hit it was like she had no bones in her body I wanted to jump right down after her I felt so I never felt so alone in my whole life a call for help sent rescue units to the scene including paramedic Charles Ingram when I'd heard this person had fallen from four floors we immediately requested a helicopter before we even left the station here I didn't expect this person to be alive I expected him to be a DOA when we got there When we continue. Words can't describe what it's like to see your child suffering. And all I kept thinking was, was please God, take care of her and keep her alive. Paramedics, highly skilled angels of mercy, ride with some of the best in the country and see what it takes to save lives. Watch Paramedics next on Discovery Health Channel. Can you hear me? 
Her head was tilted to the side. There was blood coming from behind her ear, and her eyes were bulging out of her head. It was like a horror movie right in front of my eyes, and I just couldn't believe it was, it was real. Can you hear me? I thought that she was dead, and it hurt a lot to think about her parents, and how was I gonna explain this, you know? We did this for a bunch of guys. Hold tight, paramedics are gonna be here soon. Within five minutes of the call, the Gulf Shores Fire Department arrived, led by paramedic corporal Mitchell Sims. In my experience with patients who have fallen, the outcome is usually very poor. Try not to fight us. We're trying to help you, okay? Try not to fight us, ma'am. Can you hear me at all? Time is so critical with a trauma patient because with the brain swelling from the injury, there can be irreversible brain damage. Okay, we got a pressure of 90. Let's go ahead and set up. Andrea's parents, Kathy and Jerry Jones, rushed down to the scene as soon as they were told about the accident. The words can't describe what it's like to see your child suffering and in pain the way she was suffering. And all I kept thinking was, was please God, take care of her and keep her alive. Deep in my heart, I did not believe this girl was going to make it. I looked at one of the guys on the ambulance and told him that her mother's heart was probably going to be broken tonight. Andrea was taken by Life Flight Helicopter to Baptist Hospital, where a trauma team awaited her arrival, led by emergency physician James Leaker. Apparently, she landed right on her head. And that kind of impact is an incredible force. And my initial thoughts were, well, this is a young 16-year-old who won't go back home. She's got some lacerations on the back. Donna, I want to intubate this lady. Among those treating Andrea was emergency nurse Donna Russell. She was doing what we call posturing, which is indicative of brain damage. Very rarely do people with this kind of an injury survive. And in our hearts, we felt she was going to die. Complete x-rays and a CAT scan were taken. I was amazed. It looked like the only injury that she had was her head. I was also very discouraged because her head injury did appear to be quite severe. Over the next 12 hours, Andrea's condition deteriorated as her brain continued to swell. In an effort to relieve the pressure on her brain, doctors decided to perform an unusual emergency procedure and remove part of her skull. This was a last ditch effort. The chances of survival in a person that has this degree of injury, very, very, very small. It may sound silly, but I just kept thinking, fix her up and I'm gonna take her home. It wasn't until one of the doctors said, I don't want to have to ask you this question, but I'm required by law. And he said, I may come back to you at a later point in time and ask you if you'd be willing to donate any of your daughter's organs. And it wasn't until then that I realized how serious Andrea was and that she could die. She's gonna have some tubes and things. Okay. We followed the nurse into Andrea's room. And we saw her laying in bed, and she was laying perfectly still. Andrea. All Andrea. I kept thinking about was, please wake up so that I can talk to you again. Andrea remained in a coma for a week. On Easter Sunday, one of her nurses came up to us and said, I think I have the best Easter gift I could ever give you. We walked into her room, and they had her sitting up in a chair. Shortly thereafter, she was walking down the halls, joking with the nurses, complaining about the food. <laughs> in the six months since the accident, Andrea's friend Rachel has struggled to come to grips with what happened that night. Rachel feels so guilty right now, and that's why she stays away a little bit. It's been hard for me even now to deal with everything. We're not as close as we used to be. I wish that we were. If I could take back that day, I'd give everything I own to have things back the way they were. Since I didn't become queen, homecoming <laughs> queen, this is I'm apple queen. I really want to be her friend. 
so much again, you know. And I think she needs me as a friend again to let her know that I am okay. I've learned to think before I do things because you're hurting people that really do love you. You're hurting them and you're hurting yourself and you're missing, you're missing life. I want to thank the people that gave their prayers and best wishes to us. I just want to thank them all. Here we go. How's she look? I am a very lucky lady to have my daughter back with me. Every day I cherish that I can see her, okay. that I can talk to her, and know that she is still part of our family. Look good now. Smile for dad now. Oh, I know, I'm a gork. Yeah, here it is. Gotcha. Next. Next, step inside the command center where the calls for help are answered and meet the real-life heroes who save lives. Stay tuned for another episode of Rescue 911. Next on Discovery Health Channel. Real life. Medicine. Miracles. Mr. Shapiro, step out of the car, please.